Certified Learners. It is me again, Teacher Frank. And welcome once again to our Science 5 Learning Journey. We are now in our third and fourth week of learning in Science 5. And our most essential learning competency number two for this week is about investigating the changes that happen in the materials in the presence or absence of oxygen and in the application of heat. Before we go to our main activity, I just want to present first the parts of our two-week lesson and I just want us to have a short review about our previous lesson. As a part of introduction, we will be learning what matters are and what kinds of changes are possible to happen with these materials. In the development, engagement, and assimilation parts, you will be viewing a video clip, noting observation, answering guide questions, investigating simple experiments, describing changes as observed in some materials, writing reflective journal and essay, and identifying the significant use of oxygen and heat in our daily lives. So class, you are now familiar with the different activities you are to accomplish for two weeks. Let us now proceed to our first learning task. In our previous lesson, you discovered the properties of materials and identified their uses. You also differentiated whether those materials are harmful or useful. For our first learning activity as shown in this video, our objective is just about investigating the changes that happen in the materials in the absence or presence of oxygen and in the application of heat through simple experiment. Be ready to note the details of your observation through this guide tables. For table 1, we are going to observe the three different setups or the setups A to C. And for table 2, our focus will be in setup D. In your notebook or a piece of paper, take note of your important observations such as the time each flame was put out in three different setups, the former property of the fourth candle or setup D before heating or burning, and the former property of the fourth candle or setup D after heating or burning and cooling for two minutes. So class, for this first simple experiment, we need to prepare these materials. First, we need to have four clear and empty glass jars, of course with covers, and with the labels A to D. So we have setup A, setup B, set, setup C, and setup D. Of course, we need also to have these four wax candles. And the first three of these wax candles should have the same size and the same length. We also need to prepare this tripod, a wire rose, an oil or gas lamp. We also need to prepare a lighter. And as an option, we can use this pot holder or tongs. This is another option. We can use the, this pair of gloves. This is a clinical gloves, but we can use any kind of gloves that will protect our hands from hot objects. Of course, we also need to have this small bottle cup, a paper and pen for recording or for noting details and observations, and a phone or any kind of device we can use as a stopwatch. For our procedures, the steps are Number 1. Label the glass jars Setup A for the biggest one Setup B for the bigger And setup C for smallest or vice versa Label the last bottle which will be the setup D Number 2. Light the first candle using the lighter and then put it inside the first jar or setup A 
Cover it tightly, observe and note the time the flame of the candle inside is put out. Number 3. Do step number 2 for glass jars B and C. Number 4. Using the tripod, oil or gas lamp, lighter and wire goes, heat the fourth candle inside glass jar D and observe what will happen after 1 to 2 minutes. And last is step number 5. After heating, let the candle wax cools down for another 1 to 2 minutes and observe what will happen. So class, we are now ready for the materials and we are now informed about the procedure. Are you now ready for an experiment? Before that, I am just going to remind you class that we need our extra care while doing this experiment. Especially in this case, we are about to use lighted candles. Always be careful in handling science equipment and ask guidance from an adult if needed, okay? Let us now begin. Last to begin with, using this lighter, we are going to lighten up the candle inside the biggest jar with this label setup A. Okay, and after this, we are going to cover the jar. But before that, be sure that our timer is now ready. After covering, we are going to measure, we are going to find out the time before the plate inside was put out. Okay? So I'm going to cover it right now. And stop watch now or the timer now will start. A few moments later. Okay, finally glass, the plate inside is now put out. So we have 1 minute and 50 seconds. And now we are just going to repeat the process in setup B. So let us light it up the candle inside. Okay. So and before we cover it, let us make sure that our timer is ready. Okay, so I'm going to cover it right now. Okay, and stopwatch or the timer will now start. Okay, glass. The flame is now put out and we have 37 seconds. Again class, we are just going to use the same process in setup C, which is the smallest glass jar. Okay, let us lighten up the candle inside. Okay, so we're just going to make our timer ready. Okay, and I'm about to cover it. Okay, and our timer will start now. Okay, the flame is now put up. We only have 17 seconds uh, spent for the setup C. Okay, now class, we're just going to have a review for our, the first part of our experiment. Okay, so for the setup A, we just spent uh, 1 minute and 50 seconds, while in setup B, we just spent 37 seconds and in setup C, we only have 17 seconds, okay? And now class for setup D, we're just going to put inside this wax candle, okay? And upon putting it inside, we're just going to lighten up the candle or lighten up the uh, oil lamp or gas lamp, okay? We are just going to observe what will happen after 1 to 2 minutes. Okay, so we are now heating up the bottle with the wax candle inside.
Okay class, we're just going to pour what is inside this set of tea or glass jar tea to this small bottle cup, okay? As you can see, from the solid form of wax of the candle, it is now in a liquid form. And after this, we're just going again to uh, let this wax cools down for one to two minutes. Hello class, I'm back. After one to two minutes, here is now the wax of the candle. I am just going to get it from this cup. As you can see here, class, from this solid tube like a wax of the candle to its liquid form in setup B, and now to its solid form again, but in a chip like material. So, class, we are now done with our experiment and observation. It is just easy like this. And I hope you have completed your table. The next thing we have to do is to answer the sets of the guide questions. We will use our inquiry, our observation and answers for our final analysis. And you can check later on if your observation is the same as mine and if your answers are correct based on our analysis. Class, here are the sets of the guide questions. Read it carefully and answer the questions based on your observation. Hello class, I'm back again and I hope you have completed your task of answering the guide questions. It is now time for you to check if your answer sounds good. And let us now analyze the result of our simple experiment. In the experiment presented in this video lesson, we have concluded that a candle needs oxygen from the air to continue burning or lighting. This is the reason why the flame in the bigger and covered glass jar has the longer time spent before the flame is put out than that of the covered smaller glass jar. The time of the burning is directly proportional to the presence of oxygen and inversely proportional to its absence. It is to say that in a particular space, the more presence of oxygen available, the longer time a flame will stay before it is put out. If there is an absence of oxygen, the candle will not continue to burn. Meanwhile, heat causes the materials to change in their properties. It will change the state from solid to liquid, which is called melting. This is shown when we heated the candle inside glass jar D. After some time, the liquid form of the wax of the candle turned back again to its solid state. This is because of the cooling process. Therefore, we have concluded that the presence and absence of oxygen in the application of heat are some of the significant contributing factors for some materials to undergo changes. So class, you are now informed about the significant effects and relationships of the presence and absence of oxygen in the application of heat for some materials to undergo changes. For the next sets of the learning activities for this two-week science journey, you will be learning and observing other scenarios that show changes in some materials due again to presence and absence of oxygen and due to application of heat. You will also be learning about some of the common household activities related to the presence and absence of oxygen and application of heat as well as their uses. So stay connected with our science journey. Until next then, goodbye and God bless.